So thank you very much for all of the survivors. We are only about 45 minutes late, so I'll make it fast and I will make it quick, okay? In Israel, we have a joke that says, we start as fast as we can, and then we are only going to increase the pace. Okay, so let's stay tuned. So in contrast to my uh, dear, beloved uh, colleague, I actually believe in applicable science. So if you stay tuned for the next 30 minutes, I promise, 30 minutes, not 45, you will take some nice tips home. Okay, so stay with me. My name is Ziv, and I will explain you why I'm really, really tired, and I hope you, you are not as well. So during the, the time, uh, should I come, should I not? Uh, it's okay. So during the time, go, go, go to sleep. I would do the same. Now it's really a bad time to listen for a, a, a lecture. Why? Because we are all very tired. It's not about the physics. It's not about what happened before. I don't know the language. It's our body signal to us, go to bed. Okay, so this is what happening now. It will be much worse if it was two in the morning. Okay, if people will continue to ask questions, then we'll be still in the morning. That is a problem. What's happening four in the morning, it's actually very interesting. So for males, you have the highest chance of getting heart attack and for female to get birth, right? I don't know any connection between these two phenomena, but this is something worth interest to check. Yeah, yeah, for a, yeah, yeah, I'm always right. Kidding. In six in the morning, another thing happens. If we, even if the alarm clock is not ringing yet, our body starts to become much more viable, right? So the metabolism is beginning to pick up as we need the energy to run and chase a gazelle. Because from the evolutionary perspective, we are still, I would say, even animals. In eight in the morning, we have the peak, thank you, we have the peak of testosterone. So for us, the male, it's the best time to have sex. Now, and you have to participate because it's already too late. When the woman wants, you know? Not the one that been yesterday. When the woman wants to have sex, come on. Never, I have always, I had all of this. Whenever somebody said always, we exchanged the number. So the answer for females are during the night. Okay, this is another example for the inconsistency, inconsistency between men and female. It's something of nature. 10 in the morning is actually the perfect hour to give this talk or to take a test. Why? Because our body is adjusted for high alertness. We are focused, we are sharp, we get good result. If you want to get a tip for myself, go for the dentist at two. Why is that? Because the body is the least sensitive of pain. So pain-free treatment. But if you are sharp enough, you will get, you will, you will remember that maybe the doctor is better to set the, the time for 10 and not for two. If you want to try to break a world record, you should, start, you should aim for an uh, afternoon. Why? Because our body is warm, there is a circulation going on, and we are at our peak from this performance of sport. So let's go through. In, in nature, we have numerous processes, numerous rhythms. If you want to go take a picture, I will do that later, promise you. Stay tuned. So in the millisecond, we have neurons firing range, okay? I'm sorry for this bad word in this late hour, neurons are the cell within our brain and they are using electric pulses. So the distance between each pulse is about 1,000 of a second. What we do every second, you know. Breathing and heart. This is good. Usually I give you time. We don't have time now. I'm already in my bedtime. One and a half hour rhythmus is sleeping cycles. We are going to talk about more environmental cycles. So we have 12 hours for tide, okay? Because there are some areas around the world that the organism are, for half of the day, are underwater, and the second half is exposed to air. So they have to adjust their metabolism. Today, we're going to speak primarily on the circadian clock. It's a clock that roughly about 24 hours, and you'll see exactly why I'm meaning. Do I have to explain about the monthly cycle? No. Should I explain about the yearly cycle? You also know that. 
And in the long run, we have populations. Okay, predator, prayers, they exchange with time. So the first experiment that people done on, on this field of circadian biology is actually there is a plant that opens and closes its leaf around the clock. So this was an astronomer, a French astronomer said, maybe the plant can see the light. So he did this very simple but wise experiment. He took a black box and just placed it on the plant. And the plant persists, open and close, open and close. So instead of giving the plant the credit that there is something internal within the plant, he said, probably they measure cosmic rays. Okay, so the experiment was very uh, accurate. Result or the conclusion were a little bit wrong. And this is another example of a poor student that went with his professor for one month to the bottom of the ground, okay? Imagine living with your boss in a cave and he's like writing everything when he go to bed, when he wake up, when he go for the toilet, when he eat, okay? It's a bad. Why also it's a bad? Because you are a student, right? You know that n equal one is basically, you cannot base a conclusion by one subject. So that's another problem. So where we got this clock, or why do we have it? Almost any organism on Earth that is exposed to light have a circadian clock within him. So imagine three and a half billion years ago, there was no atmosphere. And the organism were a single cellular organism, very simple one, only one copy of DNA. And whenever you are exposed basically to the, to the rays, to the UV, which makes problem on the genetic code, then you have difficulties to have the second generation. So these simple organisms have to develop some mechanism to allow them to go to dive whenever there is a ray, okay? When the sun is up, they, they went down in the water column, and when the sun set, they actually went back and respire. They had a breathing and exchange. So this is very unique. Um, because even today, a little bit more complex organism than the single cell uh, does not figure it out that it's actually very dangerous to be exposed in the sun, okay? So that's why, why we have, all of us, a ticking clock within ourselves, okay? In order to avoid a challenge, not because we want it. It actually was a critical for our survivor. So chronotype. This is the first thing that you will learn about yourself today. The second one, by the way, the first thing that you are actually very uh, grit, gritty, okay? You are sustained and you have, believe me, we spoke about it. We take our hat. Three hours of science, it's not easy. So thank you for staying. Thank so there is a saying that maybe we should agree, maybe we should not. Early to bed, early to rise, make a person healthy, wealthy, and wise. Is it true? I'm not so sure. Benjamin Franklin said that. So as you probably remember the first slide, when I used to say 10 in the morning is the best time of day to go and take a test, probably some of you said, he doesn't understand anything. 10 in the morning, I'm still sleeping, right? So, and why? It's not that I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. But we are different. We have different chronotypes. And let's take a look example, what is your chronotype? So imagine a situation, okay, that you have no kids or no obligation in the following morning. Three questions I will ask you, try to make the calculation uh, within your head. By the way, it's much simpler than Boson Higgs, okay? First question, where do you go to sleep? What is the time that you usually go to bed? When do you wake up? And then when is the midnight point? I will tell you a true story about myself. Usually I go to bed at 10. I'm a real party animal. So I ha this is why I'm also quite tired. I go to bed at 10, I wake up, let's say at six, okay? Poof, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> so between 10 to six, I slept eight hours. Okay, so we take eight divided by two, four. My midnight sleep is two in the morning, right? It's, it's not too late. So please try to do it uh, in your head. Okay, and I want to see if there is a, a, a unique chronotype in our group. So please make the calculation. If someone is around one or two or even higher, I want to know. Anyone is unique, different?
So again, I will repeat the calculation. I go to bed at 10. I wake up at 6. I will wake up at 8, okay, to make it uh, normal. So five hours between 6, between 10 in the morning, in the evening, 8 in the morning, 10 hours. So plus five hours from when I went to bed, it's 3 in the morning. Somebody is lower than 3? 6? You are 6? Okay. What? 2? Okay, two. We have an early bird here. Okay, like myself. What is your time? Four. So there is early birds. Okay, maybe us. We are about 14% of the population. We have the late ones. Okay, I'm actually surprised not to find anyone here that is late. So they actually wake up. Yesterday we had in a lecture we had someone who late. She's going to bed at four in the morning and wake up at 12. Okay, so she's definitely somewhere here. In the middle, all of you guys. Nothing special, right? What's yours? Four. Four? Eh, not so special. Sorry, but next time. But now let's take, now that you all know your number, let's see how it affects our, our daily behavior and decision making. So, this represents, I would say, the positiveness of a person tweeting. But it's not only tweeting, and you will see soon. Okay? There is a D by Rhythmus. Okay, we have two peaks throughout the day that we are more positive. So, for people that are a evening type, okay, we have an increase of the morning is terrible, as you can see, it's really low. M morning for those people is, I don't know, is uh, I have a joke in Hebrew, but it does not translate well, so I can't really tell it. So, those people have about in 11 to 12, they have the first increase of happiness. In the noon, like all of us, they do collapse, okay? They are less pleasant to themselves and the environment, and the peak or the height is at night. For the morning type, it's just the opposite. So we actually start with the birds, happy. We have a diminishing, I would say, um, energy in the, in the noon, and we have some gain of happiness now in the evening. So now it's really important. How do we make money out of it, right? It's all about it. So whenever you, they took, um, you know, public companies that are traded in the stock, they have to give for the shareholder, like um, I would say reports. So the CEO and the CFO stands, and they tell the other the reporters, we did very well, or we did not do very well. The timing of those events matters, because CEOs that choose to give this report in the morning are actually outperforming CEOs who do that at noon. Because in the morning, everybody are more optimistic. The CEO himself and the reporter, they don't ask really tough questions. While if they give it the same report, and we are talking about many, many companies, so it's balanced itself. So the same reports at the noon are actually very pessimistic. And also the reporter ask tough questions. Why don't you have better result? What happened next year? Okay, so this is important whenever you look at that stock market. So you made money, good. If you want to get out of jail, it's also very important. Listen, it's true, don't, don't laugh. Whenever you want, this graph is actually an Israeli uh, a report. So on the y-axis here, it's what are the chances that the committee that you actually um, are confronting with, right, standing in front, will give you a favorable decision. So not necessarily you will go home, but actually you have shortage of, of your serving time. So take a look. If you are the first in line, Okay, you are lucky enough to be the first in line. You have about 70 to 80 percent chances that you will have a favorable decision. As long as you are awaiting in the queue, your judges become less and less happy. So your chances to get away from jail actually are decreasing. That's not funny. Think about it when you are facing the committee at 12 in the afternoon. You will know you stay there for long. Okay, if you do have to stay there for long, make sure that you go after the break. 
because after their bag there is a spike. We have glucose from our food, we are happy, a rush of optimistic. So we have an increase and then decrease. Whatever you're going to do, don't stay late. Or even better, don't go to jail. How do you use it in order uh, to make your grades better? Whenever you are facing the committee of your PhD, I don't know if you are in a PhD, give them food. Easy. Give them cookies, something with sugar, and then give your spiel, right? Your, your talk. It will be much easier for all of us. Another thing that is really important is when to uh, go for medical care. Now it's not going to be funny, actually. So you know what is colonoscopy is? Yeah? yeah? Somebody does not? It's a treatment not really pleasant, OK? Let's keep it that way. So in this treatment, you're actually looking for cancer. You're actually looking for tumor. So they took about a thousand of patients, and they give them a handful of a, a, um, a thousand of patients for a few doctors for just signing how much um, polyps or cancer they detect. Okay, so of course some of them have zero because they are healthy, some of the patients, and some have, have much more than one. So the average was about 1.1. Okay, you took a thousand of patients, they found on average 1,100 polyps, cancerous cell. They gave the same, this was in 11 in the morning, in the good times. They gave the same results or the same patient files to those doctors at 2 in the, the afternoon. How much they discover? Do you know? Yeah, throw a number. Exactly, about a half. 500 polyps. Now, what is the meaning of that? It's not that you're going to get a, a report and say, hey, I'm cancer free. No, you actually get a false indication. You are going home thinking that you are healthy while you have a cancer. Okay, so this is actually quite catastrophic. Now, the, also the chances that they will wash their hand, the medical doctor, is getting much lower. Now you think, okay, this is nothing. But in the United States alone, 65,000 people are dying because of infection resulting that the doctor did not wash their hand. Tomorrow, right, they're going to be published in a, a, an article in Israel about how, how the medical personnel are feeling empathic to the patient. So they see that in the night, they don't prescri prescribe a painkiller as much as they do in the morning. So whatever you do, don't go at night. Try to be sick at, in the morning just after the shift starts. That's the best thing. So we spoke a little bit about in, around. Let's put it in frame. So what is the clock? So the clock is a biochemical mechanism that allows us, the organism, okay, to adjust our behavior and physiology with time. It allows us not only to react to event, but also to foresee event that comes. Okay, and there is a great evolutionary trait for that. If you know what is the next challenge and we are ready for it, we will be healthy and strong. So the clock is located, the master clock is located in our brain. Basically, it's a grain of rice, about 200,000, um, 200, sorry, it's late, you know, 200,000 cells that orchestrate about 50% of our genome. The way that this clock measures time is by exposing, exposure to the light. Okay, this is how we measure light. Now, that was the dogma for many, many years. And today, we know that in addition to the central pacemaker, we have many other clocks. Okay? Every organ in our body and almost every cell have a functional clock that ticks with harmony with the central pacemaker. Now, how can the clock in our liver can measure light? Pro measure time, sorry. Not by light, right? Because it is deep inside. So the way that the peripheral clock measuring time is actually exposure of food. So usually we eat when we are awake, which is easy. Now I want to show you an experiment. Okay, it's a real experiment, and I hope you can see in the back, but bear with me. 
So you, there is a, a mice, a rodent, on that wheel. Mice are mammals like us, and you will be amazed how much genetic similarity we have between us and, uh, and mice. Okay, and mice, like some of us, like to run. So whenever we put them in the, on the, in the cage with the running wheel, and we close the light, they start to run on the, on the wheel. Whenever we have light, they do not run because they are photophobic. They are afraid of the light, so they usually stay in the back of the cage. So what can we see here? We're actually seeing a measurement of activity. Take a look here. So we have basically a period of 12 hours of light and a period of 12 hours of darkness, okay? And it's repeat. So every row, basically, it's 48 hours. This is what we see, okay? Whenever we have light, we don't have a lot of uh, black bars. Whenever we close the light, they start to run. You see they run in the, in the beginning of the uh, night phase. They have a schlafstunde, okay? Basically, a siesta. They stop running at some point for some reason, and then they persist running throughout the end of the dark period. Now, we did a very simple experiment, like the French guy. We closed the light. Now, I know it's late, but I want you to give me the answer. What is going on here? So first question, do we have a clock? Yes or no? Yes, yes? what do you think? It's moved. What do you mean by moved? Give me an Okay, let's keep it, keep it going. What happened to the clock? So I agree with you, there is a clock. What happened to the clock? Okay, it got shorter or longer? Shorter, very much. That's exactly. So what happened? Let me go through it. So whenever I omit the external signal, okay, there is no light, food is always available. Mice have no way to measure time. What happened? First day, nothing happens. You see, first day of the dark phase, complete dark phase, right? Start running at the same time. But as time progresses and progresses and progresses, there is a shift, and you, and you said it correctly. Because the internal clock, once we have nothing outside, we have to rely on our body, the internal clock of a mice is me measuring less than four, 24 hours. Actually, it measures accurately 23.7. So, a deviation that was about 10 minutes at the first place after one month is becoming much more uh, drastic. Now, I always give example about my brothers. So in Israel, we have a, a, the summer break. It's uh, about two months without any obligation, no school. So while in, at school, my mother was the external time giver because she came to the bed, kicked them out, and said, go for school. So every day my brother would wake up at 7 in the morning, went for the school, and went to bed, I would say, they are like me, so 10 in the evening. First day of the vacation of the holiday, what happened? No need to wake them up, right? So they wake up at 8 or 9, and they go to bed a little bit later. After one month, what is happening? They wake up around 4 p.m., 4 p.m., and, and they go to bed at 6 the day afterwards. So you can say, listen, Ziv, maybe your brothers are lazy. Okay, I cannot agree, or I cannot disagree, but I will say for their defense that the deviation in those ages, teenagers, that is about 10, 15 minutes long, after one month or two months, completely invert their time. Okay, so that is the reason. Now, how many of you are, are parents for small kids? How old? No, it's not small kids. Small kids, I mean, less than a year. Somebody have it? No? You're all single? Wow, I envy you. Okay, this is what happened. All, all, all asleep. Ah, they are asleep. That's true. I envy you guys. So this is what happened with, with babies, okay? On the y-axis, what you're going to see here is the week of the toddler in weeks. So I'm drawing a, a magic line somewhere in the middle. Now, you are all professional already, so you know how to read activity plots. So what happened at the first phase? Can you see something? No, there is a chaos. Okay, there is a chaos because baby's sleep cycle is about three hours. 
Okay, so they don't really have a full night's sleep. Some do, it's a myth. Okay, but most of them don't. And you know how the parents look like? Like that. Okay, they are frustrated and they are angry on each other. I know that. Now there is a magic. Something happened around age of four months, five months. What that? You know? There is, huh? They, start to sleep. they start to sleep. That's exactly what you see from the chart. But what is the reason behind it? So there is a whole... Huh? That's true, but not all of them are feeding, and also babies feed around the clock. So they, I mean, basically they sleep, eat, poo, and that's it. That's their life cycle. Maybe based on what we've heard before, maybe the part of the brain that's like... I will repeat that, because so you all be part of the conversation. Maybe like there, there's development in the part of the brain that's responsible for... Okay, she said something correct. A, a, some part of the brain is becoming much more mature. And this part is actually secreting a hormone, a hormone that we call the dark hormone, and that's called the me melatonin, okay? So at some point, now, thanks also to the mother, the, the breast uh, milk, there is a secretion of the hormone, and all of the components of the clock are getting into synchronization, and babies sleep better. How do the parents look like? Same. <laughs> they are still sleep deprived. Okay, and that have a meaning on all of us. Even today, the distance from, let's say, your best hour of the day, okay, whenever you take a test, every hour of deviation from the peak, doesn't matter if it's forward or backward, is resulting in loss of 1% of your grade. It doesn't seem a lot, but actually it's uh, balancing the, um, the economic situation between poor kids and rich kids, those who can actually afford private lessons and those who do not. So know your clock, know where to take the time. Why? Okay, it's a, actually a good question. Why do we study circadian clocks? Why they actually got the Nobel Prize in 2018? Not because to know when to have sex, right? It's important, but it's not that important. So the answer lies in this question. What do you see here, guys? It stairs, that's true, but let's take a look at the, actually, it's a fitness center, okay? It's a gym. People are going for the gym. And it's open 24 hours, meaning probably it's in the United States. Now, these guys are, I'm sure, are going for practice. Why? Because he have towel and his socks are lifted all the way up. And instead of, God forbidden, burn one calorie before time and take the normal stairs, we take the escalator, Okay. What is, the, what is the end result? That technology, as much as we love it, it actually interferes with our daily life. Because I forgot to mention, in the experiment of the mice, you saw that without external cues, the clock is still ticking, but it's not accurate. Because we don't have anything that to reset us every day, every day. And you are all witness that we have light and we have pizza whenever we need. So the, the timing cues that we live by for many, many years are already gone. The time between when we were completely uh, synchronized by environment and today is nothing. I mean, from an evolutionary point of view, is nothing. Okay? And we have a lot of issues with that. And let's go one by one. And now it's the least funny part of the conversation. So there are many disorders. Let's go for the first one, jet lag. You are familiar with jet lag, right? Okay. What happened in jet lag? Let's say tomorrow I'm flying, I would say, to Los Angeles. I want to become a, a Hollywood movie star. So I'm leaving tomorrow, Belgrade, at 12 at noon. Okay, now I give example. I know the numbers are not correct, so forgive me. I have a 12-hour flight to Hollywood. I leave at noon meaning I will land at noon. Why? Because in my theoretical example, also the time differences is exactly 12 hours. So I make myself easy. So now I tell you the story. I'm taking a taxi uh, to the airport. So when I'm driving uh, to the ta in the taxi, I am exposing to light. I just ate something because I was hungry. So my body also measure light or activity. Now I'm taking a plane. 
I'm landing in New York, in Los Angeles. I'm landing in the same time when I actually departed. Okay? So when I go out, I see light. But when I left my body at Nikola Tesla Airport, right? And this desynchronization between the central pacemaker and the peripheral cent central maker are the one that causing the jet lag. Some of, I mean, have you ever had jet lag before? I mean, in modern time, it's only very recent that we can pass so much distance. So the desynchronization between these two clocks actually cause for headache, uh, nausea, tiredness. At the end, after a few days, the central pacemaker will take his position and will tune the periphery. But it takes time. Quick question. Which direction is easier, west or east? It's not true, it matter. South, you are on the same time. <laughs> if you're moving south, it's on the same time on the axis. East, east. east. why? OK, so the time, is, uh, it's true. It's actually moving to the east is harder. Why? Because in my imaginary uh, example, when I have to go to Los Angeles now, so I'm used to go to bed at 10 in the night. So one day I will have to postpone my sleep and I will go to bed at 4 in the morning. It's difficult, but I think I can make it. Now when I go back to Serbia or to Israel, I have to start my night at 4 in the morning, in 4 afternoon. Okay? And to sleep a full night starting from 4 in the afternoon, it's actually harder. Okay? So flying east is harder. Social jet lag. How many of us doesn't like to wake up in the morning in, mid, in a week, during the week? We prefer to stay much longer at bed, right? And as younger as we are, this deviation between how much we want to sleep and how much we actually get to sleep is getting larger and larger. And that's something that is applied to all of us, okay? Especially when we are younger, that our clock is a little bit uh, longer than the 24 hours. This is a big problem. Now, the solution? is find a job that accommodate you, okay? There is, that's the best solution. If you have to wake up in the, in the morning, I got some tips for you. I told you it's very applicative uh, lecture. So first thing you should do in the morning, drink a cup of water and avoid coffee. Easier said than done, not so sure, okay? It's actually very hard, especially for myself. And the reason is because in the morning, we are waking, and with us, I told you, in six in the morning, uh, the boy, or around six in the morning, the, our body start to uh, wake us up. We have also secretion of uh, another hormone of stress, cortisol, and it's actually important for us to stay awake. Now, whenever we take the coffee, we actually interfere in with the activity of this hormone. So it's better to wake up, drink one cup of coffee, of water, relax, okay and then take your coffee later. If you can wake up whenever, here's my coffee. If you, if you can uh, wake up in, to a natural light exposure, okay, with your curtain off, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. If everything is dark, then you, have, you will find it harder to wake up. And lastly, try to time your meal. Because I told you, our, our central pacemaker is measuring time by light exposure, the rest of our body by food. So try to make it a synchronization uh, in place. That's luckily it's too late for exam now, but basically what it, this is the map that happens and you think physics is a, a complex. So this is the map of what happened when we eat. Okay, this is the metabolic pathway of our body. Now I want to show you another example. You can see the difference between these two mice. This is a little bit chubbier, right? By the way, he have legs. When I took the picture, I didn't realize that the legs are under his uh, love handles. So he have legs. I didn't take them out. So these two mice are very close to one another. They actually are twins, as close as you, get, you can get from the genetic point of view. Now, we did a very simple experiment. We give them food, high-fat diet, basically representing the average American diet, OK, to, to their cage. We only made a, a small uh, change. This group of mice, the fat ones, receive their food 
constantly. Whenever they want to eat, they had access to the food. While the younger one, or the slimmer one, sorry, not the younger, the slimmer one, were time restricted. So their food, they have access to their food only during their activity period, only when the light were off. So usually, whenever we eat too much, or whenever we gain, this is, a, this is the problem with the time, whenever we gain weight, what people are usually tell us? Stop eating, right? You eat too much. This is not the case, okay? Because when we measure the caloric intake between these two groups, they were the same. Okay? Mice are intelligent. They actually learn that the a window of opportunity to eat is short, so they consume a lot of food. So the, end, the net caloric balance between these two groups was similar. No significant differences. And yet, this is a spoiler, sorry for that, this group died. I know it's sad. They died, they died early. They died from complication of obesity. Now, think of that. It's not how much we eat, it's when we eat. So just enjoy your beer and your snack before I'm going to say my next lecture, my next talk. <laughs> so us, as human, we are active during the day. So that is the right time for us to consume our meal. Why? Because our body, our clock, is funneling this energy into heat and to available resources. While the, everything that you, is on the table right now is getting all of these calories are getting very um, well funneled into our fat, right? Because our body is now very adequate and very efficient in storing those energy. That is a great evolutionary aspect, maybe not today, okay? So it's not how much is when. And of course, in America, like everything, you have a diet for that. It's called 16-8. Okay, you can eat as much as you want for eight hours, and you fast for the remaining of the 16. It's ambivalent. Okay, we don't have time to go into that, but there is a diet for that. No. Somebody, no. If you have questions, just raise the head. In my age, hearing is, is getting problematic. So let's talk about physical activity, okay? When is the best time to make a practice? So in the morning, we can actually lose better the weight, especially if we start a practice right after we are sleeping, after, this, after the night, because our energy levels are lower and we will access to the fat reservoir much faster. So if you want to lose weight, wake up, have something small, not a big, not a big meal, and go and uh, just do whatever you do. It will also have a positive mode. You have this runner high, okay? These are endorphins that give us a good spirit and they will last longer, okay? And I told you in the beginning, uh, testosterone is associated also with muscle growth. So if you want to be a big guy, um, like The Rock or Vin Diesel, this is the time. Why you should train in the evening? If you want to break your own personal record, and if you want to uh, reduce the risk of injuries, because your body is more adapted, is warm, cardiovascular, respiratory, all of these systems are working better. Now, I told you, we are here to make something that is tangible, right? So if you have to bet on American football, there is, there is an, a secret advantage. What happened? In American football, you have a... Um, Monday night football. It's the same time for the whole continent. So teams that are playing, for, teams that are located at the East plays, their internal clock said 9 p.m. While the teams at the West, their internal clock is five. And five is better than nine in this case. So whenever they took a retrospect analysis of many, many years and many, many games, if you have to place a bet, go for the West, okay? Now let's take a, a, a short dip about ourselves. Anyone here suffering from cholesterol? Wow, also yesterday. So either you are really healthy or 
or something else. Okay? I'm not I was too quiet. So whenever we take cholesterol, whenever we suffer from cholesterol, we have to take a drug called statin. Okay? This drug is actually not pleasant. It's, and whenever we take the statins, you know, that's actually a tricky question. If somebody knew, I knew it. So the doctor said only during the night. Okay, this drug that you can only take during the night. Why is that? Not because it's what the doctor said, because the metabolism of, of the statin, the cholesterol, is occurring only during the night. Okay, so you're actually making the treatment much more effective. If you take it in the day, nothing happens. You just take the drug, which is unhealthy. What happened with cancer? There are so many variables at the disease that we can fine tune according to our time. And I really hope that in the next 10, 15 years, the uh, notion of personalized medicine will also consider our internal clock. Because imagine that we can have a treatment with lesser um, adverse effect, with better yields. We can reduce, I don't know, many bad phenomena that usually are associated with cancer therapy. And this is only one pathology. There are many out there. So hopefully one day the doctor will get your uh, complete sequence of the genome and he will, can, he will be able to read what is your time and set the treatment to the time that is matter for you and not convenient for his calendar. Okay, so stay tuned. Now the last um, part. That's what was my PhD all about. So one day I wake up and I find a, a gray hair at my here at the head, and I said, okay, you have to stop aging. You are getting too old. So I started uh, going into deep for the research of aging. Now, as we age, many things happen, but I will tell you a few. There is a group of components in our body named polyamines. So these polyamines are very, have many, many activities in our body, okay? But as we get older, their level just go and decline. That is natural for all of us. Besides a group of people that are called centurion, those people are, have a superior genetics. They can reach a 100 years of age and they are crystal clear. Amazing, okay? There are a few communities around the world. Their polyamine level is constant high. Okay, so that's interesting. Still does not say a lot. What else that happens? whenever we get older, is that our clock becomes less and less accurate. So the deviation from our right time is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? So these two phenomena are happening. Now, the question is, are they, is there causality or there is a correlation? Is there something behind that? So we, took an, uh, we did a, 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 a simple experiment. Not so simple, but... Never mind. So we took young mice, okay, that have high level of polyamines, right? And low level of clock uh, interference. And we gave them in their diet, um, a special diet with low level of polyamines and also some drugs in order for us to reduce their polyamine level. Basically, what we wanted to make is to push their clock or their polyamine level to much older age. The result, we got mice that were walking like that, okay? They were bent, they lost hair, and there is no other word in my vocabulary to say they were crispy. Okay, so they have a lower um, bone um, strength, okay? And indeed also the clock got uh, longer. But to make someone feel bad, it's actually very easy. The reciprocal experiment is much more interesting. So what have we done? We take older mice, okay, that have, they are somewhere here, so they have low level of polyamines. We actually enrich their diet with polyamines in order to, re to bring them from the, the polyamine perspective to become younger, okay, to bring them here. Now before I want to ask you about the clock, I want to ask you a question. Do you know how long a mice live? Couple of years, three years. It's about a PhD student, okay? 
So we were really lucky, really lucky to see that also we managed to shrink down the deviation in the clock. So, whoa, fountain of youth. What is your next logical question? Where can, exactly, where, where, where can we find that? So that's actually a question that someone asked and we made a, a survey and we found that a blue cheese and also pea contain high level of polyamines. So before the, you order your unique pizza with uh, blue cheese, I want to give you some numbers. How much do you need to consume per day? So with this product, you have to consume about 10 kilograms per day, 10 kilo, and this is 90. Okay, so of course, to consume it, to feed um, that amount is not possible. So what can we do? We can actually take supplements, right? So that's, uh, I'm not saying you should take supplements, and why is that? Because uh, why didn't we pursue a company with this uh, finding? Because in some cases of cancer, you have also increased level of polyamines. And we don't want to take risk on any one of you. So that's one of my um, take home message. Whenever you decide to participate in experimental, um, experiment, in scientific experiment, read carefully. Um, make sure that you know what you're signing to, okay? You already know your best time. Use it correctly. You can be better uh, only if you time yourself to your, adjust it to your internal clock. Try to avoid using WhatsApp, uh, TikTok, Instagram in general. But if you cannot do it, maybe try to avoid it during the night. Because whenever you hold the, your phone like that, the blue light actually interferes with your sleeping uh, cycle. And that's bad for you also in the long run. Okay, so if you cannot not comment on someone else, there are, there are filters that you can actually reduce the blue light and use a red light instead. And um, of course, um, exercising is always um, recommended. So thank you very much. I know it's really, really late. I try to make it as fast as possible. If you have more questions, we can take a few of them and maybe you can come afterwards. So I don't want to hold you too much. Thank you very much for having us. Please, so Elam have like a 20, 100 question. I need to get at least. Okay. I will repeat the questions, don't worry. Ah, okay, please. All right, so the first question is regarding the hormone ghrelin, which is responsible for uh, regulating our eating cycles. And while we fast, uh, the ghrelin uh, graphs are being flattened out. As you just said, as you mentioned, uh, our liver knows what time it is by our feeding cycles. And I'm not sure how fasting, which is regarded as a great thing, uh, influences the liver and is there another way of understanding the time uh, regarding uh, except the food except the feeding what cycle. What is your name? Irina. Irina? Yeah. So I, I will answer the question for Irina afterwards okay with your permission because clearly you are professional and I don't think anyone know besides you what is ghrelin. It's right. not a dwarf it's actually a hormone so I want maybe some more general. I promise I will get back to you. All right, thank you. So some more general question, less professional, so everybody can understand. Maybe I can ask you a question. Go. Ah, yeah, sorry. And yeah, I will ask. Uh, also coming from a professional, but a bit more basic. Um, basic, basic. Keep it simple. We've heard about like the differences in uh, mice who are fasting, the mice who are not. We've heard about the differences between going to the gym in the morning, going to the gym in the evening. Uh, and all that's great and, and, and fine. Like we, we see that these differences exist, but how substantial are, there, are they in humans? Because like obviously mice are not people and okay, maybe there is some kind of difference, but can we really say that that difference is big enough for us to, to seriously consider making these changes? Okay. Fair question, fair question. Um, 
so of course, everything that in, a, in oncology um, conferences, the biggest joke is, yes, we, you, we, queer, uh, we cure cancer in mice. Okay, of course, it never translates, or almost never translates to human. What can I do say about that is when you look at people that are working in irregular shifts, okay, pilots, uh, people that are working in the hospital, they do have higher uh, increase in obesity and in several types of cancers. Okay, so if we live against our clock, we will have consequences. What will you get? That's, um, it's up to your genetics and something else. Okay, but there is, you should live, I'm not telling you close the light and live in a cave, but just take it in consideration that uh, you will get something. You want to ask something? I have two related questions. What would you say about siesta? Uh, it's the best thing uh, ever. Wait, wait. No, okay. from your point of view. And I, then I'm, I'm, about the myth that uh, having a siesta of 20 minutes is better than 40 minutes. OK, great. Great questions. So first of all, I'm a big fan of siesta. Unfortunately, life is not allowing me to have a siesta. So whenever I'm here now, I actually try to uh, siesta as much as possible. Thank you. Now, I will give you another tip, the best nap, okay? If you don't have for one, one and a half hours of sleeping, okay, a full sleep cycle, there is a, a schnapozzino, okay? That's a schnatz in Hebrew, I'm just realizing. It's too late for me. So basically, it's a nap and cappuccino, napocino, okay? That's another joke, I just made it. So what should you do if you have a, you have a boss that is... You know, you cannot really sleep on the desk too long, and you are really tired. What you do is to drink a coffee like I just did, and go to sleep for 20 minutes. Not too long. 20 minutes, 25 minutes max. Why? Because 20 minutes is enough to have some sort of recovery, but you are not entering a deeper state of sleep. And whenever you are entering a deeper state of sleep, waking up, it's like a car accident or train accident. It's long and painful. So this is why you should sleep 20 minutes and not too long for that. Okay, Napocino. Why the coffee? Because uh, caffeine takes about 25 to 30 minutes to kick in. So whenever you wake up, you are energized and also you get benefits from the caffeine. Assuming that you fall asleep immediately, right? True, so this is why I'm giving you 25 minutes. Or you should know how long it's taken to fall asleep. But don't go too much. Don't sleep too much, otherwise it will be painful. Yes, go ahead. Ah, Mike, sorry, I'm walking today. You want to shout? Yeah, I can shout. Um, from time to time, we have a day when we can't focus, we are tired and stuff. Is, that, is there some signs that... Uh, goes around that please repeat i was uh, uh, from time to time we have a day when we are feeling tired we 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 can't really focus and stuff is there some science that takes that into perspective like I, one I, out of 30 days or something i, like I would it, call it life life <laughs> if but, you are one to 30 you are lucky i will one to three so oh, okay. <laughs> no it's life there is no i'm not familiar with such cycles okay <laughs> anything else what happened in the poles, guys? When people are living, I don't know, in the Nordics, they have no light. What they should do? Ah, that's a question. Think about that. Any question from you guys? We did the you did experiment? No. We have to talk after all. Maybe I will get the mic, sorry. Fortunately, there has been some experiments done in the north. Uh, I think it was Finland, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was uh, regarding the treatment of depression, since we all know how connected depression and the intake of light are. And um, they actually uh, made uh, earbuds with LED lights that actually emitted uh, the blue part of the spectrum, and they healed depression with those uh, earbuds. So that's, that, that's connecting, that's uh, relating to the fact that you said that 
what should people in the north do? Well, they should probably use those buds a okay, bit more so, often. So clearly you are a professional. And yes, so I will repeat what she said in case you didn't hear. So whenever we are living really up north, okay, some people have a tendency to go uh, to depression. One reason is, of course, the light. Second, I would guess it's really cold, okay? And one of the treatment is light treatment. So, you, it, like, historically, they put them in, a, like, a sunbed, okay, to increase the um, vit vitamin D and uh, things like that. But uh, I know that there are other um, solutions. I thought it's only for horses, okay, because horses, you actually can... Um, 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 control the reproduction cycle, and some horses are actually very expensive, especially their semen is really expensive, like race horses. So I know that they have solution for animals. I didn't, I'm, I was not familiar with a uh, human, but it's interesting. So yeah, you can get, so humans can get a um, light treatment, and also they do have watch, okay? So they can uh, control when to eat. Now, the animals in those areas, the wild animals don't have this technological advantage. So what happened is that uh, they're actually losing the circadian clock, okay, the daily clock, and they gain a different type of clock, something that is annual. So in the, in the, sum, in the winter, when there is no cl uh, sun, the hormones level of certain hormones, the, the dark hormone, is getting higher and higher and higher, which signal at some point to the female, go get, uh, find a partner. So the offspring will become uh, uh, available or get birth in the proper time. So animals actually loses their circadian clock and gain different clock in those areas. And of course, um, some instrument. I, show me afterwards. Any more questions? Guys, it's been a long night. Thank you very much.